Who were the biggest winners and losers in 2021? Stick around and you'll see. Hi, I'm Eric Pratt with Gun Owners of America, and today I want to look at some of the top Second Amendment winners and some anti-gun losers from last year. But before I get to the list, let me just say this. You are going to see again and again that the biggest winner of 2021 is you, the activist gun owner. You guys and gals were amazing last year because without your help, lots of gun control would have passed that didn't and lots of pro-gun legislation never would have seen the light of day. So stay tuned because you're gonna see some incredible victories that GOA activists were able to accomplish together. But first, let's begin with the biggest losers of 2021. Even though he may not have been awake for most of it, Joe Biden and his congressional gun control agenda tops the list. Now, keep in mind that Democrats control the White House as well as the House and the Senate, and in theory, they could pass and sign into law anything they want. So being able to stop gun control is no small task. But to put it simply, gun control in Congress went down in flames but that wasn't for a lack of trying by Democrats and weak-kneed Republicans. Among other things, GOA activists beat back attempts to pass red flag gun confiscation and spending bills. We stopped sneaky attempts to pass universal background checks without a vote. And we exposed backroom compromise gun control deals between high-ranking Republicans and Democrats. But perhaps the biggest loss of Biden's gun control agenda was the defeat of David Chipman's nomination to head the ATF. Gun owners quickly realized how bad Chipman would have been for the Second Amendment. He's a career gun control lobbyist, a former ATF agent, I mean, the list goes on and on. But gun owners made so much noise to key senators that even liberal outlets like NPR and uh, the New York Times credited GOA members as a reason for the nomination being withdrawn. So this is a huge victory that can't be understated. Grassroots gun owners like you made this happen, and that was huge. So score one for the Second Amendment troops and a big zero for the administration. But Biden and Chipman weren't the only losers in 2021. Our next loser is gun control billionaire Michael Bloomberg. GOA squared off against Bloomberg's Every Town for Gun Safety in an Oregon court of law. Every town and a county commission were attempting to undo a citizen passed Second Amendment sanctuary ordinance. So GOA came into the state to defend the measure and ultimately the court sided with GOA and sent Bloomberg back to New York with a big loss. And speaking of court defeats, the prosecutors in the Kyle Rittenhouse case were big losers too, thankfully. Gun owners watched with much anticipation as his verdict was announced, a verdict that seemed to be so obvious to us. Thankfully, he is a free man today. So there you have it. Joe Biden, David Chipman, Michael Bloomberg, and the Rittenhouse prosecutors now have the distinct honor or disgrace of being the biggest Second Amendment losers of 2021. Now, let's look at some of the victories that gun owners scored in 2021. I'll start with our victory in stopping a gun confiscation bill. Again, I want you to see that over and over again, the biggest winner really is you, our GOA activists. Your role during 2021 was amazing because you guys were able to keep lots of legislators from compromising. You know, sadly, too many Republicans are willing to cave when push comes to shove on the Second Amendment. Case in point, the National Defense Authorization Act, which contained a red flag gun confiscation provision in it. Now, more than 100 Republicans voted for that anti-gun bill in the fall, but because of our alert, grassroots gun owners bombarded the compromising congressmen. I mean, they blasted them on social media, they were blasted in person, and anywhere and everywhere they showed their faces. In fact, the backlash was so strong that it spurred a quick about face uh, one week later. In a letter that was made public, 163 Republicans announced their opposition to the red flags provision for which many of them had just voted. 
Thankfully, the gun confiscation text was removed from the underlying bill three months later, and final legislation passed both chambers without gun control. So again, this was a huge victory, and it was brought about because grassroots gun owners like you contacted your legislators and you guys held them accountable. We frequently hear people say, what difference does it make? to send emails and make phone calls. No matter what we do, Congress is gonna pass whatever they wanna pass, so why even bother? Well, this victory shows that your voice does matter. By the way, I should mention that one big winner in this battle was pro-gun representative Chip Roy of Texas. You see, another representative from Texas got really upset with GOA, and he attacked us for exposing the compromisers who supported the red flags language in September. But Chip Roy called out this compromiser, among others. He set the record straight and defended GOA. So kudos to Representative Roy for sticking to his guns and not playing partisan politics. Uh, another victory involves our efforts to kill universal background checks. In fact, the liberal media even gave us credit for this one. GOA caught wind of a compromise proposal that was in the works between Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn and anti-gun Democrats. So GOA quickly put out an alert to expose what was happening. Well, GOA mm -hmm. members bombarded Cornyn, who then promptly pulled the plug on the negotiations. And you see there again, it was GOA members and activists who killed the compromise. We alerted you to the threat, but you guys did the heavy lifting. And when you guys speak out in unison, that lets politicians know that they're being watched and it strikes fear into their hearts. You know, one legislative office told me, oh, you're from GOA, your members are loud. Yeah, you guys are, you are very loud. There's a lot more victories that I could mention at the federal level. Please look at our alert that's posted online to read all about them. But just know it's because of you that gun control was stopped in Congress. It's also because of you that five new states joined cons the Constitutional Carry Club. In fact, let me give a special tip of the hat to our Texas team. After a couple of mass shootings in that state, Republican officials decided that Texas needed more gun control. So. Our Texas team went into high gear. We rallied the grassroots gun owners in the Lone Star State with one simple message. Texas doesn't need gun control. What we need is an end to gun-free zones, and we need constitutional carry. So GOA's team worked closely with the bill author of constitutional carry, that's Representative Matt Schaefer, and we mobilized the grassroots at every step of the way. Many of our members drove from all parts of the state and stayed at the Capitol for nearly 24 hours in a historical overnight hearing in March. They shared statistics, they shared their own stories, they put a face on the issue, and it was great. We completely overwhelmed the opposition. And that's just talking about the people who showed up in person. Thousands more gun owners made phone calls to the Capitol at every uh, step along the way, letting legislators know that they were watching and aware and that this issue was of utmost importance. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick tried to force half-baked, watered-down substitutes for our constitutional carry bill. And so again, GOA members bombarded Senate offices and said, no way, we want full constitutional carry. Well, in the end, our bill prevailed and we passed a, a strong permitless carry law in Texas. But grassroots gun owners, you know, really, they had to fight for it every step of the way. And that's the point. When we stay active, we win. When you stay active, we win. So like I said, we enacted constitutional carry in five states, that includes Texas, and we passed Second Amendment sanctuary laws in more than half a dozen states. I already told you about our, our victory in Oregon, where we saved a sanctuary law by beating Michael Bloomberg in court. Well, in addition to saving existing pro-gun laws, we passed mm. Second Amendment sanctuary laws in several new states. As of now, mm. more than 60% of the counties in this country, and that includes some states in their entirety, they're, they're, they've all told the federal government that they will not help 
the feds enforce gun control. That's a huge rebuke to Joe Biden's gun control agenda. And like I said, you all have made the difference and I'm very grateful for each one of you. There's a lot more examples that I could give you. We've won many battles in the courts over the past couple years. Again, you can read about many of these in our top highlights article on 2021. Please read the alert. It, it will encourage you because in 2022, we have a lot of work to do. We have an opportunity to take back Congress from the gun controllers and make up meaningful ground in the states. So thank you for a great 2021 and let's get to work in 2022.